Hey y'all, welcome to Camera on Plaid. I'm David and I thank you for joining us today. Today I just want to give you a brief overview of what I saw day one at SHOT Show. Uh, it will not be an exhaustive list and really uh, it is just the stuff that intrigued my interest enough to uh, take a shot or some video of it. Uh, for me there wasn't really anything game changing that I saw at SHOT Show this year. Um, you know, nothing that I really like hoped to see. Namely, I was hoping for a plethora of short 300 blackout and 5.7 guns in that six and a half to eight inch barrel size and didn't happen. So it was kind of a letdown for me. Um, I figured we would see a Ruger Charger and maybe a, a 5.7 Jackal, but uh, to no avail. So uh, let's go see what I think was actually um, the best thing from SHOT Show. Uh, first off, the, the best single company that I saw day one at SHOT Show, really for all of SHOT Show, that was Palmetto State Armory. And no, it's not just because I'm a PSA fanboy. Uh, the vast number of guns that they brought out uh, between them and their sister companies uh, really was impressive. Uh, it's tough for me to decide which item I liked the best or, you know, was the most interesting but I would probably lean towards the 5.7 Compact Rock. Uh, that thing was sweet. And the Dagger Micro X, which says that it's coming out soon. So that thing was real cool too. Those are probably my favorite. Uh, I really liked both the feel and the size of both of those, right? I, the only Compact 5.7 that has even kind of been talked about from what I've seen. And then of course, just another Micro 9, but uh, this one from PSA, so that means it's actually affordable and uh, lots of firepower on tap in a small package. So uh, the the micro the Dagger Micro X is the one that I really like. It's a little bit longer barrel, uh, but it was it's a nice little gun. Uh, then and it, as I said, uh, I really like the trigger in the Rock. Um, that's really nice. It's probably my second favorite trigger of the show. The first going to the Smith & Wesson 5.7. That was a really great trigger they put in that. Um, the next item that they have is the STG that they're coming out with. Wow, right? Uh, we've been seeing people talk about building an STG for a long time, but it just has not come to fruition. But now we have PSA who is building it. Um, this one actually looks like it's gonna happen because the designer on there, uh, one of the engineers has actually shot that uh, the STG in a 300 blackout. So it means we'll actually probably get it. Um, and uh, it looks like it's gonna be cool. Uh, the guy loved working on the gun, which was always enjoyable. Uh, if you get a chance to ever just talk to the engineers who build the guns, they love them more than just about anything else. Um, so it was enjoyable to listen to them talk. But seeing that come to uh, fruition, and uh, I of course hope that we'll see an eight millimeter Kurtz round come out of the AAC since they're going to be one of the four calibers that they're producing it in. Uh, the next thing that they had that I really like uh, was the all different jackal variants, <laughs> right? There was all kinds of different jackals. First and foremost, the 7.62 by 39. That's probably the best of them, but I know a lot of you uh, are probably intrigued by the nine millimeter version, so. That'll be cool. And then of course the rifle versions look nice uh, and they're natural flow out from the 5.56 pistols. I really like the 16 inch and the 13.7 inch. Um, I like the, the extra handguard length on the 16 inch and just the look. I am however really hoping that we do see a 13.7 inch pistol since they're producing the barrels anyways. I like that length in general for 5.56 guns. It gives you a little bit less barrel, so it's more maneuverable while still having um, as much energy as that round needs. So hopefully we'll see that come to fruition pretty quick. Uh, then probably the next part from PSA that I really thought was cool is their Sabre line of guns. Uh, that's their kind of like custom um, PSA Gucci versions that really are meant for like a quality duty rifle for not all that much money. So that looks really cool. A great price point with all the accoutrement that's being offered. And then, uh, you know, we have the H&R offerings, right? 
Gotta love an A1 or A2 carry handle AR. And, and especially in the market right now, that's not something that's really uh, many of those that are available. Uh, 2020 through 2022, the A1 and A2s were really hard to come by for um, those kind of uppers. So uh, having more that are produced that way is great. Really for me, if I could just get my hands again on um, some fairly inexpensive A1 and A2 uppers to build my own uh, clones with, that would be satisfactory for me, but it's cool to see them coming out with that. Of course, uh, also their nine millimeter Colt SMG style um, mag fed guns that are coming out. That'll be interesting to see as well, right? What, what's old is new again. Uh, and then uh, really we come down to AAC and uh, all of the, the different offerings that they have. Uh, my favorite from them right now is the 75 grain uh, 5.56 five, loading that they have. That is great, especially 60 cents a round for a high quality match grade round. That's sweet. Of course, then there's the 125 grain 300 blackout round. And now we have the 5.7 offerings, which are really cool coming to market right now. Uh, as of today, the 40 V Max version is available for 60 cents a round before tax and shipping. And now we're just waiting to see what the speed numbers are for that round. Uh, hopefully their 40 grain FMG or FMJ round will be hot since that is something that the market is currently missing. The next kind of impressive thing for me at SHOT Show was Smith & Wesson, right? As a company, uh, I thought they did a great job. Uh, the best part of course was the s and 5.7 uh, with that rotating barrel lock is sweet. A uh, nice and thin, uh, a lightweight gun with a wonderful trigger. The trigger on that thing was amazing. And again, uh, it was just dry firing it, but it was a very nice trigger. So I think this will be a, a contender, you know, 23 rounds on tap and it'll be good for the 5.7 market. I, I think PSA still has the edge on the 5.7 uh, pistol market since you can get a decked out rock with the Holosun 407. Uh, for 600 bones. So that's that's hard to beat, but I think S&W is going to give them a run for their money on it. So can't wait to see that. Uh, the next thing from Smith & Wesson was the M&P Axe GVAC, a GVAC. So a suppressor host AR that is designed with Gemtech to have like zero gas blowback for the shooter, right? And of course that's the hype that they're selling, but man, uh, I can't wait till that gets out into reviewers' hands. And if we get an AR that really has such a low amount of blowback, I think that'll be huge for the AR market. So that'll be cool. So looking forward to that. Uh, s and did a great job, I think. I think maybe, um, you know, after PSA, probably some of the best new designs. Uh, so then we get to Magpul. And I think Magpul brought some great stuff. Uh, their barrier device, a, a clawed hand stop, and I'll be showing it to you, uh, that has like an arc of teeth on it that you can just push into a barricade to help uh, make more stable, accurate shots. That's awesome. Um, the best part is that you can replace the teeth, right? So even as you're shoving that bad boy into some concrete or some metal, like on vehicles, and you wear out the teeth, they're actually replaceable. Uh, I didn't see very much something like that from anybody else. F1 has a, a barrier device that they uh, were bringing to market as well, but uh, their stuff's a little bit too shiny for me. <laughs> so uh, if you like bling, check out the one from F1, but I think the one from Magpul is probably going to be uh, the one that I will end up going with. Uh, we will uh, look at their stuff on day three. That's F1. Uh, and then... Magpul has a brace that meets the ATF's unconstitutional rule coming out um, along with an ambi uh, bra uh, safety with a quick 90 to 45 degree throw capability so you can switch between the two. I'm not big into ambi safeties, but for a lot of people, that's a big deal. This is an inexpensive, lightweight item that um, can quickly transition between those two. So. A bit of a yawn for me, but it may be something that you really like. Uh, the best part from them, um, from my point of view, is actually their uh, MS-1 light sling. And so 
My favorite sling personally is actually the MS4, which is an MS1 attached to a uh, quick disconnect for going from single point to uh, two point sling. And so this thinner, lighter MS1 is right up my alley. Uh, I think for those who are running a bad gun, of course, because I love bad guns, uh, this is a great option. I, I personally don't put a sling on my bag gun, I put the sling in the bag because that way I don't have anything that it's getting caught on. And then when I need to, if there's a lull in a fight, then I could put it on after the fact. And so having one that uh, has all the features of, that I already like, but is able to like kind of squish up into a much smaller ball or a much smaller footprint than the standard sling offerings, to me, that's really cool. And so uh, for me, that is the best item that Magpul is producing this year. They, of course, have um, a stock that they're looking at and their uh, scope combo. That thing from, I think it's Matt, Matek, um, it looks cool. It's not the way that they have, they're showing it this year was with something other than from Vortex, which was kind of a surprise. And... It was now being done through a loophole, and what the gentleman said was that we can use any type of scope that we want to, as long as it fits into that, uh, you would be able to use. So that's cool, and then still be able to get um, all of the uh, aiming device information that that one provides through your favorite scope. So pretty cool, but again, I think the uh, MS-1 Lite is the probably best thing that I saw from Magpul this year. Then we go to Anderson Manufacturing, right? And nothing necessarily new per se from Anderson, um, as they had already debuted the, the Kyger 9C uh, last year, but they dropped the Kyger 9C Pro, and the, the Pro model has what is a full feature set on a Glock 19 style uh, weapon, it's lightning cuts, RMR, optic cut receiver. Um, yeah, all the custom features at a great price point. The 9C Pro MSRP, I think, was $449. So you're getting all of these custom features in an inexpensive but high-end built um, Glock-type pistol. So that's cool. Uh, you know this by now, I'm sure. Uh, they, they also have the uh, SR version coming out. That's the suppressor ready. So again, a, a great Glock 19-type pistol with a suppressor ready option. And I'm sure you know this by now, uh, but we live in the age where you can get a Glock 19 uh, and an AR from whomever you want, right? Whoever your favorite manufacturer is, is making one. So, so look around and uh, determine who has the feature sets that you want uh, at the price that you want and, and go for it, right? Uh, if you're looking for a great price with uh, great options, then I would point you to Anderson, or Palmetto State. Uh, I've used both for uh, builds in the past and they're great products. Had them, like I said, for literal years. Um, actually, we're at, we're at decade plus now. Um, also, of course, uh, everybody and their mom is having uh, beautiful yet strained paint jobs. So look around, you might find one that you like. Uh, I'll show you a couple photos of the stuff from Anderson here if you're interested. All right, so the next thing, <clears throat> looked at was Foxtrot Mike. Now, Foxtrot's actually where I started the day. They're the first one I saw when I came in, and so I wouldn't harass them. Um, their Mike 102 is what uh, the video you have probably seen looks like, uh, the AK Mag based gun. So that's cool if you are into uh, those. What I really like uh, was the fact they're adding that HK style <clears throat> bolt hold open, which is nice for all these front charging style guns. So you don't have to use a bolt catch per se um, to, to hold the whole bolt back to get them to lock open. And so I think that's important for all of these front end charging weapons that we see that they go to that because that's not necessarily something that uh, we're seeing much in the way of from uh, weapons on the American market, right? Like that's normal, not unusual for the European style CZ, Scorpions, things like that. But we don't really see that with the 5.56 and 7.62 guns. In the United States. So I really like the ingenuity and price that Foxtrot Mike is bringing to the market and we of course will see what they have coming out soon and look forward to that. All right next thing was 
the Burris 5T, a 5X prism offering uh, that is in a small package, right? And I saw three three different 5Xs this year. I, I thought the Burris looked really good. It looked it had like clear glass. I tried to get you guys a couple photos, but I couldn't get the video to focus. So uh, here we are. Uh, this one is of at least three 5X five offering, five offerings coming out this year, and it will be interesting to see how all the other develops, right? All the other developments that come from it. Likely, if, if three companies are making a 5X, they see the necessity from it. Uh, it's not necessarily a new thing, uh, but we see new offerings, and we see the market for that size growing. And the great thing about all these prisms is they have a fairly small footprint, which means you get a fair amount of magnification for not all that much weight and not all that much room being taken up. So that was cool, uh, but I think this is one that you're gonna want to go and see at your store if you're in the market for a 5X and see if it's something that you want. After that, we have some new light rifles from Howa. Uh, these were nice if you are looking for a lightweight hunting rifle uh, that won't break the bank. Some of these are offerings that are like four and a half pounds and they're in that $600 range. So that may be worth looking into if you are interested in a lightweight hunting rifle. Uh, then we have DSA. And, and DSA is really just bringing out uh, kind of like the throwback FAL with some beautiful wood stocking. Uh, and it's, it's just supposed to be that nostalgic feeling to it. Um, it's beautiful. And um, of course, they also have their... Uh, Rhodesian painted uh, themed gun and, and really who doesn't like that pe that paint scheme but uh, if you're interested in like an old school FAL and you like that really like rugged wood look uh, it is a clean looking gun from DSA. So the next thing we have is the Rock Island 5.0 which I thought was really nice. Uh, I love the feel of it. It has a, a great trigger if you check my shorts, one of their presenters gives a quick rundown on the pistol. Uh, it will be interesting to see how it well it performs in the wild at its price point. All right, this is this is meant to be a gamer gun. Um, I really like the fact that it has a super low bore axis. It's why I shoot Glocks because I like having that bore axis as close to in the hand. And with the way that they nestle the barrel down inside the gun, there uh, it should be there. That's below. Uh, even like straight into the back of your hand. So should have a very low felt recoil and, and we will see of course, right? But it is an interesting design. So it's not all, all that normal that we get these like flat square barrels. So it'll be interesting. Um, then we have a B and T, right? The old standby. Uh, this is B and T do, does amazing work. Um, what I really loved from their offerings was just seeing the, the 320 chassis that they have uh, with the folding stock in there. Man, that thing is super small. Uh, it's really incredible how small it is. And, and it, it would make a wonderful PDW if American gun laws weren't illegal and stupid. Uh, seriously, this thing is super small and light, and it would be great for on-body carry with a more, you know, a, a greater potential. But until the NFA is repealed, because it is clearly an infringement, um, I don't see this as a viable option for the American shooter. So next, uh, maybe last, <laughs> because it isn't really new for this year, but really caught my attention was the Winchester Wildcat series. So these 22 rifles that are, are using a 1022 type rotary magazine, um, or you know at least compatible, with 1022 magazines are sweet. And what really caught my attention was being able to get the magazine out with just one hand. Um, I press the button and that bad boy shoots out. You'll see a video here. And, and, and really it shoots out of the magazine, like uh, out of the gun, like <laughs> it wants to get out of there. Unlike a 1022 where you're like fumbling with it, half the time it doesn't water, matter. It doesn't matter which iteration you have. Like the first ones were difficult to get out. Uh, the newer ones are a little bit tighter, it seems like. And then even after they put that little hinge thing, the magazine still doesn't want to come out. So uh, that's what's so cool about the Winchester is that you press it and it, it, it bolts out like it's under spring tension. So um, I think that was probably the coolest thing. So I was pleasantly surprised to see how well the Winchester Wildcat magazines came out. 
Um, and then let's see. As I said, this is not an exhaustive list, right? Uh, this is just my day one. Everybody else's day ones are going to be different. I saw many other companies, but these were the ones that I saw and I thought were worth, were worth noting. Um, I asked about a 5.7 charger from Ruger and an SP7, right? The, uh, a civilian version of an MP7 since they got there and got kind of similar answers. Uh, the Ruger reps said, uh, I haven't heard anything, but of course we have the 5.7 pistol, we have the LC carbine, so just that expectation that eventually it'll happen, but no, no suggestions that it's in the works or we're, we're about there, that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens there. Um, that was kind of heartbreaking because, you know, I expected to see one there. What else? Uh, the HK rep advised that HK is building an American factory. So I don't know where they are in that. Um, I don't pay all that much attention to HK because HK generally seems to hate American civilians. Um, and so super cool stuff, but it doesn't matter if I can't get it. Usually the only things I care about from HK are the stuff coming out of Turkey because that's what you and I can get. And that's awesome because there's a lot of stuff coming out of MKE. So the HK rep advised that uh, they were building the, uh, the factory. And then once they have an American factory, guess what? That means that uh, projects would be available then. That was what he said. So take that for what it is. Um, I thank you guys for joining me today on this uh, little walk through, through uh, my day one observations. Hey, let me know if you have interest in any of these things, or if I said something, you're like, I, I don't think that thing actually matters. Um, let us know that too, okay? Thanks, y'all.